Welcome to Maths with EJD. In this video, our focus is on complement and difference of sets. All right, so let's talk about complement, complement of sets, complement of sets. Okay, we need to understand that the complement, the complement of a set A, of a set A, denoted, denoted as A prime, or if you like, A bar, is the set, is the set of all elements, is the set of all elements, in the universal set, you know, in the last video, we talked about the universal set of all elements in the universal set, in the universal set U that are not in A. So it means if you remove A from the universal set, whatever is left would be the complement of A. So how do we show this, we can say that A complement, the notation for A complement is the same as this, that it is all X such that X belongs to the universal set, such that X belongs to the universal set and X does not belong to A. So every, every element in the universal set that is not in A is said to be the complement of A, okay? Let's talk about some examples, examples of complement. All right, so if we have this, we have the we have a universal set. Okay, just indulge me to use this. So U is one, two, three, four, five. And then we have A to be one, two, three, right? So a complement, A complement will simply be uh, everything you get. You know, one, two, three are already in A. So if you cover up everything in A that is in the universal set, whatever is left is your complement. That is 4, 5. So 4, 5 is the complement of A. Right. Okay. Then we go ahead to this too. Um, you have a universal set, which is apple banana and orange apple banana and orange apple banana orange a set of apple banana and orange and then you have a to be banana a is banana so that means that um a complement would be when you cross out the banana in a so banana is here so it's here so Whatever is left is your complement. So you have apple and orange. Okay. So that is the complement of A. Now, what is the application of complement? I think that is a really important application. How do you apply complement? Probably in reality, right? So you need to understand that in probability, in probability, Improbability. Improbability. The complement, the complement is used. The complement is used. Interestingly, after set theory, I'll be teaching probability. So you can that's why this foundation is important. In probability, the complement is used to find the probability, to find the probability of an event not occurring, probability of an event not occurring, which is useful, which is useful, which is useful in risk assessments, in risk assessments, okay? So if you are sure that something will not happen or you know the probability of, of something happening, so it can help you to plan for risk all right, so let's talk about properties, properties 
of complements, properties of complements. You know, we just talked about applications of complements. What are some properties of complements? Let me complete this. Application of complements. Okay. All right. Properties of complements now. The first property is what you can call involution. Involution. And what that simply means is that the complement of the complement of a set is equal to the set itself. The complement of the complement of a set is equal to the set itself. So that means if our universal set is one, two, three, four, right? And then we have A to be one, three. Then A complement is, is of course, two and four. So if you take the complement of that A, right? So A complement complement. That means if you strike out two and four from that, you get back to you get back to uh, a you know strike out two and four you have one three which is again a so involution is one of the properties of complements. Okay, so again you have another property of complement, which is the law of complementation. Law of complementation. Or better still, okay, well, let me say law of complementation. I was just going to say it's complementation, all right? Law of complementation. And what does that say? It says that A union, A complement is equal to the universal set. Uh, let me write this better so you can see that properly. So the union of A and the complement of A is always the same as the universal set. It's from the example we had above where... You know, you have A. So if you look at, let me do this. If you drag this down, you know, if you drag this down, A union, A complement, that's, okay, we've not done union. So uh, maybe I should just leave the leave this and talk about that later so that, um you know, the whole thing will go logically. So if you have issues with union, we are going to talk about it pretty soon. So, uh, the uni A union A complement is equal to the universal set. Um, okay, this is why the union can even have a tail. Now, I told you the union should have not, not have a tail, but let's allow it to have, so it, we can distinguish it from union, okay? So A union A complement is equal to the universal set. And again, A intersection A complement is equal to the to an empty set because nothing is common. Of course, A union A is, when you put all the elements of A and A complement together, you get the universal set. But if you try to find what is common to them, nothing is common. That is why A intersection A complement is an empty set. That is the law of complementation. So lastly, we talk about the, the Morgan's the Morgan's laws. The Morgan's laws. The Morgan's laws. Okay. And the Morgan's law simply says that the union of A and B, the complement of the union of A and B is equal to the complement of A intersection, the complement of B. And in the same vein, the intersection of the complement, I mean, the complement of the intersection of A and B is equal to the complement of A union, I mean, uh, complement of A union, complement of B. All right? So if you find A union B and you take its complement, it is the same thing as the intersection of the complement of A and complement of B. Now, if you find the intersection of A and B and you take the complement, it is the same as the complement of A union, the complement of B. So those are the properties of what we call complements of a set. So with that, we come to the end of the complements of sets. Now, let's talk about differences of sets. Differences of sets. Differences of sets. So, now, differences have a little, uh, it, it looks a bit like complementation, but not, not exactly the same. Of course, it involves striking off something from one set to get what is left in the other. So let's see how that works. So difference of sets. How do you find a difference between two sets? Of course, we know the whole idea of difference is subtraction. So if you have four minus three, we have that's one, right? So for sets, how does that happen? 
difference of sets. You need to know that the difference, the difference between the difference between two sets, between two sets A and B denoted, denoted by A minus B, A minus B is a set, is a set containing, is a set containing elements. It contains elements in A, elements in A, but not in B. Similarly, similarly, B minus A contains, contains elements. B minus A contains elements in B, but not in A. Okay? So, of course, you've seen the notation already that A minus B is the same as, is a collection of all X such that X belongs to A and X does not belong to B. X is not an element of B. X is an element of A, but it's not an element of B. In the same vein, B minus A is the, coll the set, the collection of all X such that X is an element of B, is a member of B, and X is not a member of A. So that is the idea of difference. Now to drive this point home, let's talk about some examples. Let's talk about some examples. Okay. Examples. You have number one. A is one, two, three. And B is three, four, five. Okay. So if it's for A minus B, so you have A minus B will be equal to, it's more like you're saying one, two, three minus three, four, five. So A is like the boss, so to speak. So everything, everything in B that is not, that everything in B that is in A, remove them. So that means you strike off three is in B. So you strike it off, you strike it off. Whatever is left in A, not B now, whatever is left in A is the result. So one, two. So just like you said, we said A minus B is Elements in A that are not in B. So elements in A that are not... So 3 is in B. So 1 and 2 are not in B. And they are in A. So that's your result. We can also turn it over and say B minus A. That means you have 3, 4, 5 minus 1, 2, 3. So whatever they have in common, strike them off. So 3... Uh, Yeah, they have 3 in common. Strike them off. So whatever is left in... B. So whatever is left here, whatever is left in B, you have four and five. That is how to deal with difference of two sets. Very important. All right. So let's talk about applications of difference of sets. Applications of difference. Applications of difference of sets. Difference of sets. So how useful is this? In a Venn diagram, we are going to talk about Venn diagram very soon um, uh, in a couple of videos after now. So, so in a Venn diagram, in a Venn diagram, set difference, set difference, set difference is used, is used to highlight, to highlight elements, to highlight elements unique to one set, unique to one set, which, which could be useful, which could be useful in identifying, in identifying exclusive, in identifying exclusive members in two groups exclusive members in two groups. So when we get to Venn diagrams, you'll understand this very well. So 
uh, in a Venn diagram, set difference is used to highlight elements unique to one set, which could be useful in identifying exclusive members in two groups. So let's talk about the properties of set difference. Properties, properties of set difference. Properties of set difference. So the first property is non-commutativity. 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 Non-commutativity simply means that A minus B is not the same as B minus A. So it, it, an operation will be commutative if, uh, for instance, addition is commutative because 2 plus 3 is 5 and 3 plus 2 is 5. Multiplication is commutative because 3 plus 2 is 3 times 2 is 6 and 2 times 3 is 6. But division is not because 2 over 3 is uh, 0 0.67 while 3 over 2 is 1.5. So th that's not commutative. So difference of sets, set difference is not commutative. And then we have identity, identity. So identity simply talks about the fact that A minus an empty set is always A. Whereas, okay, my, a, a minus an empty set is always A. That's identity for you. So it's more like saying three minus zero, it's always three. So then we have the idea of domination, domination. So for domination, A minus A, is an empty set. So if you remove A from itself, it's empty. It's more like saying three minus three, you, you get zero. So that is this that is the idea of uh the property. These are the properties rather of set difference. So with that, we come to the end of this, but not before uh we we have some practice questions. Okay. So if I say that R, okay, given that given that a oh okay yeah the universal set first given that the universal set u is one okay let me use alphabet letters of the alphabet so you have a b c d e f g for instance and then you have okay let me use p q r now p p is a b E, F, Q, 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 uh, Q is B, E, G, then R is, say, A, E, A, E, F, G, okay? So what do you do? Uh, so given all this now, question one, find, find P complement, Q complement, R complement. That's one. Then two, two, find P minus Q, P minus R, and Q minus r okay three uh for three what should we do for three um establish establish the properties establish the properties for set complement for set complement with P, Q, and R. And lastly, for establish, establish the properties, establish the properties for set difference, for set difference with P, Q, and R, with P, Q, and R. Okay? So, that would be a very good uh, way to end the class. So feel free um, if you practice it and you think you, you're stuck up, uh, you're you're stuck somewhere. Feel free to talk to me in the comment section. Of course, if you have not, uh, if you have not subscribed to this channel, you want to do that so you don't miss 
these great teachings. Then, of course, you want to hit the notification bell so you can always get notified anytime a new video is released. Of course, you are encouraged to comment, like, and share. You can make comments about maybe what you like to learn or if you have a question you want me to solve and you, if you want me to clarify something or you, if you do this practice and you just want to show me, I'll be very glad. All right. So see you uh, in the next video where we'll be talking about union and intersection of sets. Bye.